Yo guys, what's up? It's time to do my tier list for Warcraft 3 Night Elf units. There isn't that many when you look at all of them. A wonderful units at the disposal of Night Elf. And Night Elf doesn't have a lot of summonables. They do have the Force of Nature Treant from the Keeper of the Grove. And they also, of course, have the Avatar of Vengeance from the Warden. But I won't be looking at these summonables as I also didn't look at Water Elemental. I'm not going to look at Feral Spirits. So in short, we're going to be talking about some of the history, the strength, the use applications for the Night Elf units in Warcraft 3 melee one-on-one -on -one games. So if you're ready, let's get started. It is a little bit of a joke at this point, but I continue to rank the workers for each race. It's more of an excuse to talk about them and to give them some limelight. Naturally, any Night Elf player cannot win without workers just like Undead and Human cannot win without theirs. So I'm gonna put the Wisp in tier S. Also, do not forget that it took thousands of Wisps together to bond together uh, to blow up our command and literally defeat one of the greatest threats Azeroth had ever seen. So naturally, <laughs> Wisps against our command, pretty OP. But what is the Wisp? It is a 60 gold worker unit that gathers gold and lumber for the Night Elf race but does not have a direct attack, just like the Shade. The Wisp is uh, special in this way because every other worker unit, including the Shredder, Ghoul, Peasant and Militia, the Peon, uh, all have an attack as a worker unit. The Wisp does not. In return, what the Wisp gets is an ability to detonate, to basically self-explode and deal damage to all summonables around itself. Additionally, it will remove all buffs and debuffs on allied and enemy units alike, and it will deal damage to summoned units. This is pretty useful in a pinch, because it gives Night Elf the unique design niche, in terms of game design, to have Dispel at tier 1, and to have Summon Killing at tier 1. Humans need Priests at tier 2, uh, Orcs need Spirit Walkers or Shamans at tier 2. Undeads need one of Negation, which might be coming to a future patch in Warcraft 3. Or they need Destroyers from tier 3.5. Night Elf gets their Dispel from Dryads or from Wisps, and this is the only one that's available at tier 1. Together with the Glaive Thrower, that makes the Wisp very unique in the design of Warcraft 3. Which leads to a wonderful asymmetry between the different races. Roughly equally balanced, roughly 50% win rate, though through very different means. And that is interesting. The Wisp is a useful unit to bring into battles against human and orc armies that use a lot of summons, like bloodlusted armies. Also, when people are going for three heroes, to get several detonates on two or three heroes together in a cluster can be a great way to burn some mana away, which is also what it does. It burns mana. You can burn mana on heroes and units. I've seen you, uh, good Night Elf players put Wisps in Zeppelins to drop them in the middle of battle to start detonating on Necromancers with Necro Wagon strategies and also to remove Water Elementals, Inner Fire, Slow and so on and so forth. It's a very versatile little Will o' the Wisp that is fantastic. And of course the Gold and Wood Lumber gathering would already put the Wisp on tier S. Okay, let's move on to the next unit. The Archer unit. Archer is a fantastic unit that has a great range with only 245 points of health. The Archer is not the tankiest unit, but she does have a unique passive ability called Elune's Grace. Elune's Grace allows archers to take less magic damage from spells, such as Stormbolt, Thunderclap, Blizzard, Chain Lightning, Shockwave. And that's an important ability for them to have because without it, such a small health unit would certainly be destroyed by all the heroes in the game. You see, Warcraft 3 is an RTS, but it's technically not a traditional RTS in the sense. If the most classic RTS that exists is, let's say, Starcraft 1 and Starcraft 2, and by extension, somewhat Command and Conquer, Warcraft 3 is not exactly a st classic Starcraft-like RTS. While Age of Empires 2 and 4 are very classic, Warcraft 3 has some of that RPG hybrid energy. And because of this, the unique, delicate balance of unit versus unit is not entirely respected. You'll find in Warcraft 3 that as heroes gain in power, getting experience from enemy units and also neutral creeps, small health units 
that are masked, like archers, ghouls, footmen, and headhunters, start to become more and more vulnerable to enemy heroes. And that is why Elune's Grace is pretty important to keep this unit relevant as the game goes on. Archer is the staple unit for Night Elf, with one or two others that we'll get to later. It is a flexible unit that is high in damage, high in range, but low in survivability, despite the Elune's Grace. Archers during the nighttime can hide with Shadow Melt to become invisible, except if the opponent has detection or means to stun them out of the out of the invisibility sh from Shadow Melt, such as TC War Stomp, which is an untargeted stun ability that can reveal invisible units, so long as they have invisible from actives, such as Shadow Melt. As such, Archer is a pretty versatile unit that is extremely vulnerable. There are few units where it is more possible to be out of position than with the Archer. For although she is a relatively small looking unit, she actually has a larger footprint than the Footman and the Ghoul. Unlike the Footman and the Ghoul, she does not fit between a gap of two Moonwells with one single gap in between them. Uh, let's say two single two gaps. So uh, a, a, a one gapped opening does not allow Archer to walk in between, but Wisps, Footman and Ghouls can. That makes her, despite being a two population small ranged unit, relatively clunky. And I hope she doesn't get angry at me saying so. Because of this, they tend to kind of trip over each other when trying to run away from threats. Archers are also not the fastest unit, so it is pretty possible for them to just get absolutely run down by some of the faster moving threats in this game, such as Ghoul Frenzy Ghouls, Raiders with Ensnare, and also heroes, especially heroes with the benefit of a movement speed aura, such as TC with Endurance or Death Knight with Unholy Aura. That makes archers one of the hardest to use tier 1 units, as they can be out of position and just get run down and it could just lose you the game. But if you play with them with a good measure of intelligence, reticence, hesitation, paranoia, safety and smarts, then you will be able to use archers very well. They are a good creeping unit that make use of tanky frontliners like Keeper of the Grove, Tree and Force of Nature, Demon Hunter's high agility and survivability with evasion, and Ancient of War creeping, which is something every Night Elf does at medium to higher level. Together with that, their high damage and spam ability is a fantastic creep accelerator, and that helps you to get into the game well. They also do good damage when standing behind tanks, and they synergize well with Dryads. My best advice for archers would be to play extremely safe with them and to always run from early game threats or to hide behind moonwells and around trees. Once you've done that, it is so valuable to save however many archers you made in the early game, which could be one, two, three, four, five, or six, usually, somewhere between that, one to six, and then to start combining them with Dryad, Bear, Mountain Giant, Talon, or Hippogriff to become a Hippogriff Rider. Combining them with one of these five units greatly enhances them because now they have tankiness, they have roar, they have a tank, they have slow which allows you to kite, damage amp via talents or mobility amp via riding on the top of a hippogriff. So archers have this sweet spot. First they help you creep, then they become vulnerable, then you want to get your tier 2 units out to help them. And then as you get to the late game, they usually become supply that ends up getting replaced again by higher value, more survivable units. But not in every game. Archers continue to see some use in the late game against Orc, though perhaps not against Undead, and not against Night Elf, and probably not against Human. So Archer is a very important staple unit that has some strength when masked in certain situations. Staple units in my tier list generally go to tier B, I wouldn't say that they're OP, not anymore anyway. They had a couple of balance changes up and down. There was a time where I would have might have put them in tier A, uh, as you could pretty much go Keeper of the Grove, double Ancient of War Mass Archers, and win a lot of different matchups. But I'm just gonna put them in tier B for staple unit, or should I say stable unit, stable, stable with the B. Okay, next up, the Huntress. Huntress is an interesting unit. In a way, Huntress is the dominant tier 1 unit, with their high movement speed, their 600 health, and their bouncing melee attack that has more range than melee, but less range than any ranged unit. The Huntress is a unit that with their mobility and their spread damage is fantastic at killing buildings, killing workers that are repairing buildings, 
killing workers that are not repairing buildings and also winning against light melee units they do very well against footmen grunts they can win against archers but it's kind of a case of archers kill hunters very fast but hunters also kill archers very fast so it's all about positioning if the hunters are on top of archers or headhunters they destroy them but if there's any form of blocking slow um you know distance then hunters get destroyed by ranged hunters can beat rifles when they're on top of them but they'll generally lose heart because they take too much damage from piercing attacks seeing as how they're unarmored which take amplified damage from piercing so the huntress in my opinion is a stone axe in the stone ages if you have an axe and your opponents do not you're gonna win that fight however soon enough the industrial age comes along and i believe this is not exactly how human uh, history and development went but i hope you get the metaphor uh, the hunter soon enough gets outscaled and is made obsolete by all the more modern weapons they lose to almost everything in the game as such the huntress is a valuable unit for rushing and countering they have a very short window of effectiveness where they can do some kind of rush this can be true against undead it can be true against night elf it can be true against orc and it can even sometimes be true against human though i want to say not rarely you hunters against human is usually a loss condition in the current meta of the game i can't say that they're tier d, d though they have their purpose against undead fast expansion they continue to have purpose game long against uh orc until shadow hunter gets level five so the huntress is not good enough to be staple as their window of usefulness is too short and they get countered too easily but they are a tier c unit they also have sentinel that's true they do have an active uh, which is sentinel which allows them to have true sight just like the priestess of the moon with scout owl for the rest it's all dust of appearance and uh, that's pretty nice hunters also suffered from a recent balance change that made ultra vision a tier 2 upgrade instead of a tier 1 upgrade when tier 1 ultra vision was still a thing hunters were even scarier but now they've lost some of that early power spike that they used to utilize next up the glaive thrower glaive thrower is a three population long range siege unit that is the only long range siege unit that comes out from a regular barracks which is called the ancient of war for night elf the only one that comes out at tier one catapult or demolisher i should say mortar team and meat wagon are all tier two units because of this glaive thrower is uniquely positioned to be an incredibly powerful unit if slowly sieging out your enemy base or enemy towers via attrition of a very small amount of damage comparatively was actually called for however the glaive thrower is like it's kind of like a tennis arbiter without a tennis court there's really not much point for their skills yes quiet please quiet please but you're at a dance festival not that useful and the glaive thrower is usually better outmatched by archers let's look at the glaive thrower despite a recent buff hitting them soon via the ptr patch suggested changes with 20 bonus movement speed the glaive thrower is very slow to produce very slow to repair they're mechanical which means that they cost money to repair and it's slow uh, they're relatively expensive at 210 gold 60 lumber they do relatively low damage less than 100 their attack is dodgeable and if you're looking to kill towers at tier one you generally pick archers because they're not such a liability in every other way unlike archer they do not attack up unlike archer they can miss archer cannot miss so not only is there almost never a call for the glaive thrower they're also outmatched by every other unit in the game by night elf as such glaive thrower is a very solid tier d and if i made my tier list with f i may have even put them in f glaive thrower is the kind of unit that you may never see and then once in a blue moon one out of 762 games you might be tower rushed by an orc or a human and you might get to a situation where you crank out a hunter's hole and somehow you have the better army they cannot flood your base but there's a whole cavalcade of towers standing outside your base that you need to break out of you can't get in range of it but you cannot you cannot get attacked either then and only then with all those conditions met would you make a glaive thrower because if you try to go for a glaive 
but you are not definitively winning the the unit versus unit battle yet they're not even a good solution against the tower because the enemy can just suicide on your glaive thrower with all their units kill it and then their towers continue to win and dominate so you would normally solve unit versus units plus tower battle with archer hunters not with glaive all right next up dryads dryad is one of the most versatile staple units in the knights of army they are a three population unit that is pretty cheap i believe they're 145 gold with 60 lumber they're also fast i believe 350 movement speed and they also do slow poison which is a passive ability that triggers on every auto attack they do which is a damage over time poison and it also slows attack and movement speed on the opponent they also have an ability called abolish magic which is a 50 mana spell that can be manual or auto cast that attempts to immediately dispel enemy buffs on them and dispel debuffs on you that makes abolish the only intelligent dispel in the game every other area of effect dispel will remove everything it is agnostic about what it dispels debuff buff abolish understands what's good and bad for you and then deals with it and if there are spells that are unclear they're double-edged swords such as lightning shield on my unit lightning shield on your unit then abolish chooses not to auto abolish leaving it entirely up to the decision making of the player to decide if that's something they want to remove or not however with dryad's mediocre mana pool with a maximum of 200 they can at most only remove four spells with their maximum mana pool and that's not a lot when you're facing something such as moss necromancer with meat okay, wagons Keep against moss work. necromancer meat wagon dryad are a, a difficult and bad choice for many reasons although dryads kill necromancers very well with their damage type the vast armies of the undead cannot be appropriately dispelled by their one by one abolish magic you would need wisps and as such in the right circumstances necro wagon is an incredibly scary tactic for night of to go up against even if we don't see it a lot in the pro meta because it's hard to get to and night of may take too much map control before that however it's one of those secret tech that undead can do against night of that can be so good at the mid to lower level and maybe even at the pro level if a couple of things change or certain balance changes hit in just the right way dryads have a lot of purpose they have a lot of play i'm going to be putting them in tier a or b they're extremely fast they slow the enemy they dispel they do good damage they slow enemy movement and attack speed uh, they're just fantastic while they're three population they're only 145 gold that makes them cost 46.66 repeating gold per supply that actually makes them cheaper per supply than almost anyone else so you can either see oh and they're magic immune they're magic immune this makes dryads i believe the cheapest gold per supply investment you can see that in two ways either the dryad is a three population unit that's very cheap or it's a two population unit that is supply heavy so she's either supply inefficient or she's cheap it depends if you see her as being the power of a two supply unit or a three and i think she's more of a three than a two that just makes her cheap so she's spammable is she tier s is she tier a well let's let's do a little thought experiment can you mass dryads in any matchup and win even if they get counter units i have seen this answer be true many times yes you can fast expand as a night elf and then spam dryads and win against undead even if you're countered by Meatwagon or fiend you can still win because they're so spammable and you have so much money that you end up being 20 or 30 population more than the opponent it's not necessarily going to be easy you need to do good battle micro but i've seen it work thousands of times against undead i know for a fact that dryads also work when masked against orc in many history of the game's uh, meta in night of mirror mass dryad is not as common but priestess naga in with a fast expansion or demon priestess or demon dark ranger or priestess dark ranger or demon priestess with a with a kind of fast tier one and a half expansion into huntress dryad or archer huntress dryad or archer dryad has often been a meta game as well in night of mirror even if bear demon naga is more common right now as of 2024 and then against human i've also seen mass dryads work even when countered by 
Footman defend, mortar team, rifle priest. I've still seen dry mass dryads win. It's not always ideal to do it. I'm not saying mass dryad every game, though you can't really go wrong with it. And they're also a perfect support unit in every other game. I think that makes dryads tier ass. They do have counters, right? But they're such a, a, a ubiquitously used unit. They're so powerful in so many games. It's either A or S. I'm gonna slap them with the ass. Then, Druids of the Claw. Druid of the Claw is a transformation unit that has a Night Elf form where they have 500 plus health. And they have a Druid of the Claw bear form where they have 900 plus health. In their base form, they have 20 plus damage. And in their bear form, they have 40 plus damage. They also, uh, they have a bunch of spells when they're in their Night Elf form, such as Rejuvenate, and roar and the ability to transform to the bear form whereas in the bear form they only have transforming back to nido form unless you get the mark of the claw upgrade which also unlocks the ability to roar when they're a bear rejuvenate will always require the nido form though the bear is one of the biggest staple units in the game for night elf which would require me to put them in tier b bears have been good since time immemorial all the way from the year 2002 to the year 2024 22 years bears have never hibernated once they have been rebalanced from time to time but druids of the claw are just damn solid and not only are they a staple unit they are crucial they are fantastic they're going to be tier a by my choice right bears enable many things they can heal the frontliners of warden and demon hunter so that they can continue to take punishment a single rejuvenate will heal 400 health and it's non-combat interruptible it's only dispellable by enemy dispel and of course your own wisp detonate uh, they have often been called in the history of warcraft 3 siege bears you've got the catapults and the ballistas yes but bears even though they don't have siege damage do so much damage on buildings that people have often gawked in awe at how quickly they would take down a town hall or a great hall and they would lovingly or hatingly be called siege bears. Anytime a night elf faces an enemy that has a fast expansion and the night elf is not able to reciprocate, they may just make a decision to do a bear all in, getting six, seven bears and try to bear down upon the night elf, uh, upon the enemy base. And it may be completely impossible for the enemies to stop them against such a bear faced assault. Druids of the Claw are a four population unit with high damage. Roar gives them 25% bonus damage. And every next Druid of the Claw that appears from the rally of your Dru Ancient of Lore can pop up and heal one of your bears or one of your heroes and continue the relentless assault. They're a damn solid unit that is probably maybe the best tier three melee unit in the game. And I say this a lot when I talk about what is so good in Warcraft 3. It's the fact that many things that they do are non-combat usable. A Tauren has Pulverize and can of course creep faster because of it. But it doesn't give you anything to your hero. A Druid of the Claw gives Roar to a hero and gives Rejuve to a hero outside of combat. And that makes them an excellent sustenance and maintenance unit that really ties the entire game plan for a Night Elf together. Just like Tranquility being one of the best ults in the game on the Keeper of the Grove, so is Rejuvenate one of the best abilities in the game, as it helps you when you're not fighting. And it helps you while you're fighting. Damn solid, tier A. Next up, Mountain Giant. The third brother from the Ancient of Lore, the third, well, sibling, Dryad is not exactly a brother, she's a sister. Uh, the third unit from the Ancient of Lore, Mountain Giant is the silly little brother that you wish didn't join every time you go out and have a party with your friends. Where Dryads and Bears are the popular kids, the Mountain Giant is just awkward, doesn't know how to fit in. At seven population, Mountain Giant is an interesting unit. One of two Warcraft 3 melee racial units that is seven pop together with the Frostworm, the Mountain Giant's design niche is to function as a tank. You see, Night Elf has a mostly ranged army composition. They're the only race without a melee unit at tier one, with the archer, huntress, and dry, uh, the archer, huntress, and glaive thrower all being ranged. Druid of the Claw is the only melee unit in the game that's not a hero, unless you count the hippogriff, of course, uh, being an air melee unit. And then there's the mountain giant, a melee unit as well that is supposed to stand in front of dryads, archers, 
Talents and Chimera to block and tank for them. How do they do this? With high natural base armor and two upgrades that make them tankier than heroes. Resistance allows them to, resistance skin I should say, allows them to become immune to possession from Banshees as well as become immune to Kodo Devour, which would be a very easy solution to such a large and girthy unit. And it also makes them take less damage and have less long effect from other things such as Polymorph and Snare, Slow Curse. All of these last about three times shorter on a Mountain Giant than they would on something like a Dryad or a Druid of the Claw. Finally, the Mountain Giant has pretty good damage, about 40 damage. He can also grab a tree which transforms his attack from normal attack to siege attack gives it a bit of extra range as he's now holding a tree as a club clobbering you over the head with it it also increases the amount of damage when it goes from normal to siege and siege damage does bonus damage to unarmored and fortified which are buildings and siege tanks so they'll do better against dryads huntresses talents and buildings that's pretty damn cool but at 7 population, they're not usually your first go-to to kill buildings. If you wanted to kill buildings as Night Elf, you generally use Bears, Huntress and Chimera with Corrosive Breath. Mountain Giants are good for killing it though. And they're virtually unkillable, especially when you factor in Staff of Preservation. They also have one more passive ability upgrade that you can research at the Ancient of Lore, which is called Hardened Skin. This reduces the amount of damage they take from physical attacks by 10 and then you start counting their armor percentage damage reduction and effective health increase. The Mountain Giant has 1600 health, and with all the stats that you can add to him, they can easily have an effective health in excess of 3000 health. That makes them unattractive focus targets. It makes them a great tank if the opponent is bad enough to focus them. You just don't focus the Mountain Giant, and then the Mountain Giant doesn't do as much as his 425 gold cast would have you require him to do. There is one redeeming factor to their ability to, to tank though. They have an active ability called Taunt, which is a non-mana cooldown based ability that issues a single attack command on the Mountain Giant for the enemy units. So unlike in some MOBAs or MMORPGs, Taunt is not a persistent stun plus focused attack effect. It is a single instance in time where all units perform an attack on him now if the enemy doesn't do anything aka their 40 apm you know casual player which is totally fine and i think it's awesome if they play rts games as well and enjoy them then taunt is very powerful because you do one taunt and suddenly this large cluster of enemy units is attacking this thing that has over 3000 effective health meanwhile archers are pelting those units and killing them but the better an enemy player gets, the worse taunt becomes because they anticipate the taunt, they see the taunt, and then they counteract the taunt. All of this in less than half a second. So those cancelled attacks really aren't that big of a deal. As such, at the high level, Mountain Giant is at best a tier C. They're not useless. We've seen some Mountain Giant massing. They are completely impervious, unstoppable juggernauts at killing buildings when they have war clubs in their hands, which by the way is 15 consecutive siege attacks and then the tree has been spent. However, I cannot rank them as a staple unit because they're not, and I cannot rank them useless either because they're not. They're a niche unit that sees their best use when they're not functioning as a tank because the opponent will just ignore them, but when they're the only thing there is. Mountain Giants are attractive, when everything else that you might have would die too easily. And when what the opponent has is weak against Mountain Giant. They cannot ignore the Mountain Giant when they're everywhere. If you have five, six Mountain Giants, which is a large investment to be sure, you can't do much against those with an army like Dryads, Talons, Archers, Huntresses. Mountain Giants are pretty damn good against Grunts, Raiders, Spirit Walkers, Doctors, Shamans. So there is a bunch of units that Mountain Giants can work well against. They're a counter unit, C for counter. Let's move on, Druids of the Talon. Let's get things, let's get things straight first of all. Druids of the Talon were last used against human in 2003 or 4. Ever since then, well that's not entirely true. Uh, Talons basically 
didn't see a lot of play in most matchups, but actually there's a pretty cool and intricate history for all four matchups where they got used. Let's start with Night Elf against Human. Night Elf against Human in 2003 and in Reign of Chaos, it was common to mass bears and talents and master them both. That was in Reign of Chaos and I did that a lot with great effect. That was the alternative strategy to mashing Ancients of War, which were fortified armor and a thousand health with 50 average damage back then. After that, after Reign of Chaos and as TFT came in and Spellbreakers came around, Talents lost a lot of their relevancy because Druids of the Talon have a magic attack and the moment Human has Riflemen or Spellbreakers, Talents are so hopelessly countered, it's not even funny. You'd be crying if you had talents against rifles or breakers. So, not a staple unit against human. However, there was some purpose to them. For many years, Night Elf would use archer-based openings and would then go to talent build with lots of archers. Think like an army, 10 archers, 3 talents. In order to continuously assault a human fast expansion that would then invest in defense footman upgrades to counter archers. And then the magic damage talents would use their double damage amplification to take down defend footies. So they were a very virtuous combo together with archers. As such, talents were a short term, soon to be obsolete, uh, obsolete unit solution against human. That is most of their extent of their history against human. In the current meta, Night, uh, Night Elf doesn't really use talents against human. Uh, pretty much at all. So they're essentially tier D against human. Against Night Elf, talents have always had some purpose. Fast Expo builds with Archer Talon have had a really good fighting chance against bear play. The talents cyclone the bears, kill the bears, and cyclone the heroes. And together with archers, maybe some summons, and a superior army because of the fast expansion, talents have had their play. The bear player would then switch to mountain giants to counter the talents, at, w at which point the Night Elf player would have to switch to something else to counter the other Night Elf player's Mountain Giant. So talents have their place in Night of Mirror. They're kind of a ninja strategy, a kind of secret tech that isn't quite meta, but is always lying under the surface of potential. Against Undead, talents have had the most of their play in 2002 in Reign of Chaos. Huntress Archer Dryad Talon was a big meta against Undead in Reign of Chaos and in early Frozen Throne as well. Same build, Archer Dryad Huntress Talon. They were vulnerable, they did get Coil Nova, but getting a couple of fairy fires off was often a big damage amp to bolster the army of Fire Lord, Beastmaster, Demon Hunter, Archer Dryad Talon, Huntress. But then Talons really dropped off against Undead. And until almost forever, Talons never saw a play again against Undead. You see, the big problem was we saw a couple of ninja builds of Talon against Undead in the last 10 years. But the main problem is they get countered so hard by destroyers because Talons have magic damage and destroyers are magic immune. However, a recent balance change saw Talons be able to attack destroyers when they're in their crowd form. You see, Druids of the Talon have three spells. Fairy Fire, which gives vision and armor debuffs on an enemy. Cyclone, which throws a unit up in the air, can be a hero, but it can only be a ground unit, not air. They can also transform into a crow. As a crow, they could attack with magic damage, enemy air unit only, but did not work against destroyers. But as of a recent patch, Talents can actually attack destroyers, because I believe crows now have piercing damage, which means that they can target destroyers. As such, they win that battle. They still lose big time to Frasnova and Fiends though, but there are some games now where Talons have some purpose against Undead. However, by far and away, the biggest niche for Talons would be against Orc, the biggest use application. Whereas their tier D against Human and C against Night Elf and Undead, they have to be tier A against Orc. Druids of the Talon in spam was a newly developed strategy in the year 2005. This strategy blew over from China with Magic Yang developing the strategy and Spirit Moon famously perfecting it. That's a Chinese player and then a Korean player respectively. Basically, the idea was Demon Hunter first, Beastmaster second, and Fire Lord or Tinker third. 
Demon Hunter is a very tanky agility hero with evasion and has mana burn. Beastmaster, Firelord and Tinker throw up a lot of summons via their abilities. All of this together forms the meat shield and the damage. The talents were then the support unit, the support in an MMOR MMORPG if you will, casting buffs and debuffs from behind. They would cyclone enemy units, they would cyclone and fairy fire enemy heroes and units, and then together with the heroes and the summons, they were part of kind of a high-tech momentum strategy that became the bane of orc existence with more than 50% win rate. Just talents. One archer into mass druids of the talent. Totally uh, strong and OP strategy against orc. It was lessened in strength a bit in the year 2018, 19 or 20 when orcs gained fortified burrow research upgrade at tier 2 during their stronghold days instead of needing to go to tier 3 in their fortress because a large part of Talon's threat against orc was the fact that their magic damage was able to take down burrows so well dealing double damage to those defensive structures and this would cripple the orc and force them to often stay very near themselves in order to very near their base in order to keep themselves safe from uh, the talent threat. Yeah, very nice, Logan. Go get it. Good boy. So, talents against Orc A, C in most matchups, D against Human. I'm gonna put Druids of the Talon in turn C and tier C as an average. And that makes Night Elf have quite a lot of tier C units now that I look at it, actually, which is uh, interesting. It's very interesting. I might even have to put Bear and Archer higher up <laughs> to compensate but it is what it is i think this is what it is and that's why you see so many of these three all right hippogriff hippogriff are an anti-air unit only they have a melee anti-air attack that makes them just like the gargoyle but unlike the gargoyle they cannot go to the ground and heal up in stone form and unlike the gargoyle they don't have an anti-ground attack that means that hippogriffs cannot creep except if the entire map is full of dragons which fly, then they can creep. Their only design niche, their speciality, is the fact that they can have an archer mount them. The Hippogriff Rider, with archer on top of the Hippogriff, which actually should be a unit by itself in this picture, uh, the Hippogriff Rider is a unit that combines the total health pool of archer and hippo and just adds them together. It completely adopts the archer damage without amplifying it with the Hippogriff's attack. And it also adopts the archer's range and then adds 100 on top of it. So if archer has 700 range with upgrade, hippo rider is 800. They're fast. So you've got a fast moving archer when archers are normally slow. They're tanky at 785 health, I believe, which upgrades the archer from her 245. Archers two pop, so is hippo together. They are four population. You would think that this is a kind of virtuous combo, but the truth is hippo rider loses to every other air unit almost and that makes them not a good anti-air unit. They're a good harass unit with decent damage. Uh, they have a piercing attack and it's long range and it's fast attack speed. I think faster than archer, so in that sense it's a DPS increase. And you would think that the flexibility of being able to mount and then dismount at will would make them a versatile strategical option. But the truth is, it's just weird. It doesn't usually work out well that way. And as such, Hippo Rider is an awkward unit that has a very small use application and the hippogriff uh, itself loses to bats beats wind riders loses to garks by stats usually uh, by flexibility and use case of course hippogriffs beat frost worms and they beat uh, chimera but they lose to anything ground based so they're this weird counter unit that doesn't have a large application use and as such they will also go to tier c and hippogriff rider is either tier C or tier D. Hippo Rider is either tier C or D. The only use case in one-on-one -on -one melee where Hippogriff Riders are not a meme are Night Elf fast expansion with archers against undead. Then you take your first six archers and you put them on hippos. Now you've got six Hippo Riders. And then you transition to Mass Fairy Dragons. This has been a meta that we see a lot and that's where hippo riders gets used but it's like it's this small time window from minute six to eight in a single matchup and no other matchup i think a two minute time window in a single matchup and no other matchup constitutes them as being tier d honestly 
There's, they are the best D in the game, maybe, Hippo Rider, but I don't think they're a C. Next, Fairy Dragon. Fairy Dragon is interesting. Magic Immune, 14 to 16 piercing damage, has a phase shift ability that upon first damage taken in a certain window of time, phases them out of existence and untouchable for a bit, which means the first archer hit in a, in a whole flurry of archer arrows uh, procs it, they disappear, maybe take a bit more damage because there's a tiny amount of fade time, but then some hits can miss. It doesn't work when they're webbed by Raider or Fiend. But the main uh, the main thing that Fairy Dragons are, they're not a great fighting unit, right? They have some piercing damage and they have the magic immune, but they have small health pool. So what the Fairy Dragon really is, they're an anti-caster unit. Fairy Dragon has a active ability that they channel that does two things. One, it gives them 15 bonus armor. So they get a lot of bonus armor, which is cool. They're hard to kill. A bat rider no longer kills them in a single explosion as opposed to killing them in a single explosion. And they take a lot more hits from ghouls after a fiend webs them, which is cool. But the real thing it does is the mana flare does an anti-caster ability. Any hero or unit that casts a spell takes a multiplier of the mana cast of that spell in damage with a maximum of 75 damage. I believe it's 75 that spreads and splashes to all adjacent mana having units to make it clear if five talents stand next to each other and a single one of them casts cyclone all five talents take 75 damage the cooldown on this ability is very short so if five talents cast five cyclones with a 0.2 second delay in between cyclone 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 all five talents die from a single ta uh, fairy dragon, it has almost no uh, cooldown. It's just a tiny cooldown. If you do simultaneous spells, she can only punish one. It's splash. It's immediate almost. It's good. It's really good. It makes you not able to bloodlust or purge very happily with shamans underneath their radius. And their radius is pretty big. If I had to guess, I'd say about 900 range, maybe, mana flare. Mana Flare has a range of an area of effect of 750 with a maximum damage of 80 against units and 50 against heroes with a 200 splash radius and the damage interval is 0.75 seconds oh, and they get 12 bonus armor. So we're slightly off on the stats but pretty much got the gist of it by and large and that's pretty damn good, pretty damn good. However, it is a reactive passive ability that requires your opponent to do something in order for you to get value. If they don't cast spell, you don't get the mana flare. If they're out of range, it doesn't work, the damage. So it is pretty good, but I wouldn't say fairy dragons are a staple unit. They're a nice counter unit, and as such, we've got another unit in tier C for Night Elf. I did not expect the tier list to turn out this way, but I'm just being honest here. And that's how I feel about it. It's a big awareness moment. Perhaps Bear, Archer, RTRS. Because how else are they balanced? They are 50% win rate, roughly. Okay, next up. The Chimera. The Chimera is a 5 population, double-headed, Chimeric Dragon that has a massive anti-ground magic attack damage that also does considerable and decent splash damage. Chimeras can murder almost anything in the game very fast, but as an air unit they don't actually have an anti-air attack so they lose by default to every other air unit in the game R chimera also do not beat inner fire riflemen they probably don't they don't beat archer dryad because archers are spread out and do piercing damage dryad slow the chimera chimera have less range than those so there's a number of ground-based armies they lose to as well they lose to rifle priest with inner fire they lose to archer dryad they lose to Rifle Priest without Inner Fire. They also lose to Headhunter Raider. Unless you have insane amount of Chimera against an insane amount of Berserker and uh, Raider. Chimera lose to Fiends. So they lose to so many things on the ground and they lose to everything in the air. Chimeras just really, really rock the world of Workers, Huntresses, Glaive Throwers, Druids of the Claw. They kind of to deal damage to mountain giants but it's a pretty slow battle it's like destroying a wall with a spoon 
a very sharp spoon a very rusty and sharp spoon and heavy one of those heavy spoons that you get when the when the guests come but perhaps not the rust it's a big old rusty spoon when you try to kill the mountain giant uh, they obviously kill torrents and grounds they do pretty good against berserkers because berserkers are short range as well um and uh yeah so chimeras there's like let's say 30 percent of the units in the game that they destroy they do really good against heroes because they're tanky and they do good damage they destroy buildings with their corrosive breath upgrade which improves their range against buildings and gives them a siege damage attack against buildings chimeras destroy burrows that are not upgraded to fortified with their magic attack they're a strong counter unit which puts the chimera in tier c you'll see chimeras in a regular pro game where human does a tier two attack with sorceress priest spellbreaker footman and mortar team then if the knight of can get to chimera they will if the orc goes for torrents and somehow the knight of cannot stop it with mass talents spoiler they can if they can't stop it with their own bear dryad spoiler they can but if for some reason they don't have those and they're too far away but somehow they're close enough to chimera chimera will destroy torrents chimera will destroy torrent based armies with caster support um, sometimes you see mass huntress mass expansion style into chimera from night of against either human or orc historically not a lot recently chimeras almost never see play against elf because dryads hard counter them being magic immune and chimeras have a magic attack so there's a couple of counter situations where they see play but it is pretty uncommon you'll probably see chimera in fewer than one in 40 games but they have their counter situation so there you have it i am in deep shock i am in great and deep shock that night elf has so many counter units these units aren't useless they come out at the right time these two are useless they do not come out and these three units are staple if you were never allowed to make another unit then wisp dryad bear and archer very little would change it would pretty much look like how most of night elf looks like and there you have it that's the night elf list i ranked their heroes among the lowest tier and i ranked their units the lowest tier by going by my tier list i would imagine that night elf is the worst race ever but they're not they have the top prize money in the history of uh, warcraft 3 together with human followed by orc and then by undead so they're not weak right it just means you should make more of these guys and fewer of this basically like a broken clock right twice a day but then you double down on those and night of buildings are pretty good i guess you know what you know what can i can i do something here that is a bit unexpected a little easter egg ancient of war is a unit when an ancient of war uproots they become a 900 health self-regenerating tree eating whacking machine that has perhaps only a movement speed of 100 or so but can get up to seven armor and more move speed and hits with the power of 40 normal damage which is insane they are the complete creeping accelerant and part of the reason why night elf is a competitive race without ancient of war with only this night elf would be bad but because of Ancients of War and Moonwells and trees fighting back, Night Elf is a competitive race. Therefore, I'm going to put Ancient of War in tier A. There's not a game that you play without Ancient of War. And there's not a game where you won't see uprooted Ancient of War creeping. Sometimes even two. Warden strategies are often propelled forward by two Ancients of War, creeping multiple different places of the map in rapid succession. Ah, so I've, I've saved the Night Elf race with ancient of war just like blizzard saved them when they invented ancient of war and there you have it the night of tier list what do you think about it and did you enjoy watching this doing a little deep dive into the night of strategy uh, and the history of the meta in the last 22 years of this wonderful game if so make sure to give me a subscribe and you'll see my next videos on warcraft 3 and on so much more thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and enjoy the rest of your work day day or otherwise, or night. Good night. See you next time. Bye.